Hey, uh, so we're talking about the Pentax 672 today. Um, Pentax uh, 120 camera, SLR design. It is pretty beefy system. Uh, I think the latest in the five models of the Pentax 6x7, 6x7 system. Yeah, so the Pentax 6x7, 672, um, it is an SLR design. So it takes, you know, bayonet mount lenses, Pentex. Um, I'm going to show you guys a couple of different of the mod of the bodies and uh, some of the lenses that are for it. Um, we've got the six by seven, the later six seven, and then this is the six seven two. Um, in between all that, there was a Honeywell six by seven. Oh yeah, the six by the Pentex six by seven with mirror lockup, which all of the six sevens and six seven twos have mirror lockup built in. So there's no differentiating before between the late models. Um, the, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those cameras. Here. So here is the uh, Pentex 6x7 with mirror lockup. We can see the switch here on the side um, indicating that it has mirror lockup, um, which this one has no battery, so the mirror is stuck up at the moment. Um, and this meter that is on it is the later uh, TTL meter with the Pentex logo. Earlier on you had the um, the Asahi Pentax and the Pentax both with and without meters. Um, so that's really nice that this one has the meter. The 6x7 II or the 672 I should say, um, seen here with its standard meter, the AE prism, um, auto exposure prism. I can pop that off and see, nice beautiful little piece. Um, you can also put on uh, waist level finders or a variety of other attachments on top. Um, the nice thing about this system, the reason somebody would choose to go to the Pentex 67 system, regardless of what model, um, ideally the 672, because it's the latest. Um, number one, it's an SLR design. So when you're holding it, you know, when you're shooting, it is, it's pretty traditional to what you would expect to be shooting on a DSLR or a, a 35 millimeter um, SLR, you know, um, whether that be Pentex or anything else. Um, I myself started with a Canon AE-1 program um, in college in SLR design, very easy to use, and then transitioning to something like this is pretty easy to do because um, it's the exact same layout uh, as far as mounting the camera and lens, looking through it and operating, stuff like that. It, it takes roll film, 120 or 220 film, so 10 frames or uh, 20 frames per, uh, not per second, 10 frames or 20 frames uh, on a on a roll there. So it's 120, it's, it's a very, very friendly camera to use um, not only the SLR design but the availability of accessories and lenses looking over the camera um, you have let's pull out our manual here we have uh, different parts of the body you have your your LCD readout it'll have your frame count your exposure stuff like that um, and then inside the viewfinder it'll show your your frame count your light meter um, in a variety of other things, flash functions and stuff like that. Your mirror lockup, that's one thing, one of the great improvements on this camera over the earlier ones. Um, let me grab a, uh, let me grab all three of them here for you. So here we have um, the Pentex 6x7, the 67, and then the 672. Uh, both of these, the 6x7, and of course these will only ever come with mirror lockup. Um, so all three of these mirror lockup. On the 6x7 and the regular 6x7, the mirror lockup is here on the side, which is right where your hand wants to be. So it's a, been a common complaint that, that that may get switched up. And the downside to that is once it's switched up, you can only get the mirror back down by taking a photo. Um, so that's a bit of a pain. Whereas the 6x7 II um, has a simple switch here on the side. So you're, you're shooting your pointer finger. It, it can get a little close, but you can flip the switch up you know, and operate it, and it, it's not necessarily in the way of where your hands are. And obviously, the other notable thing on the 672 is the grip that is standard and built in. Um, you can get third party or uh, name brand grips for the other two. Um, you can see it's got four strap lugs here. Um, I can show you how those attach in a bit. The really common external grip you can get is the, the wood grip here, usually seen on the left, or well, I guess only seen on the left. It's made for it. So you attach it pretty easily, screw down, and your flash can now go right here on top. Uh, Non-TTL, they do make a later uh, TTL grip that, that can be used for it. But um, you can see it's very, very easy to handle. You know, when you're walking around, you're not going to drop it. You know, it's a pretty expensive system. So 
being able to carry it safely is, is a, a plus. Um, so you can get this wooden grip for the left side and they make a little short one for the other side that's you know a little more ergonomic. And then there's tons of third parties out there. I've seen guys with three, 3D printed ones, um, you know, whatever, whatever you want it to be. And this wood grip also can be slipped onto the 672. Um, bring your, your plastic newer body back a little bit with some vintage wood and brass over here or wood and uh, chrome and that's another difference between the the older style and the newer one the 672 is a lot of plastic a lot more um, plastic into the design um, which is going to save your weight a little bit but that that i mean it's a heavy system no matter what we're not cutting off half the, the weight or anything but it is something so so in looking at the what lenses are available for it, i'll show you guys some of that um and we'll get into comparing it with some other systems um like i said earlier on the the lenses are i mean anything you want there there's fisheye wide you know medium wide-ish kind of stuff there's even some zoom lenses out there um i don't think we have any of those right now um macro shift um i don't believe there's any tilt shift but some shift lenses and then of course telephoto with even uh tele converters and even uh, some macro tubes extension tubes to go with your macro lenses so i'm going to show you guys a few of the cooler lenses that we that we've got at the moment uh, this one here a pentex 6 7 uh fisheye 35 millimeter f 4.5 um the 6 7 versus some of the other lenses that i'll show you that have the 6 by 7 uh, mostly just to note the age of the lens um, this lens has built-in color filters for black and white film um, and let's put it on here and see what we can do. So just orange dot, orange dot, clicks on there. So like I was saying, this, the uh, 35 millimeter 4.5 fish eye, um, we'll see about showing some, a photo of what it can produce, um, in the video and we'll have some specs, you know, up here in the box or whatever. Um, so this lens is the widest you can get. We have an air sat 30 millimeter as well, a uh, Ukrainian lens made for this. Uh, so you can get a, lot, a couple of third party lenses to go on these systems as well. Um, so that's really nice. That, like I said, the benefits, not only the SLR design, but the availability of stuff. Um, tons and tons of lenses, grips, finders, tubes, all kinds of things you can attach to this and flashes as well. Um, so I'm put a different one on here. I'll show you something else. Here we have a Pentax 67 soft focus, 120 millimeter, 3.5. Um, so this one, if you're familiar with any soft focus lenses, you once, regardless of your, uh, your aperture and all that, you can change the depth of field, the, the way that it looks. Um, so soft focus is kind of a fun lens. Um, not really my cup of tea, but it's it's one out there for, for people looking to do some different things. I guess we should show this one, um, it's the, 105 f 2.4 this is uh that again pentex 67 model um, so the later design with the rubber grips uh, so this one is probably the premier lens that you would see on a pentex 67 outfit um, you can choose to put a 90 millimeter 2.8 on it uh but but this is really the one you should go for yeah this is the the lens i mean it's an opinion but this is the lens that you would want on your camera it's a nice uh 105 millimeter awesome 2.4 aperture um the lowest aperture you can get for this system um that i know of at least so this is this is the one to go for um we also have the earlier six by seven um, which i need to show you one of those ones so i could show you what i'm talking about let me let me pull one of those out so this is the six seven design in the older six by seven this is a 300 millimeter so we started out with a 35 millimeter this is a 300 millimeter f4 i want to say yeah um and this is yeah so this is six by seven um i'll have to grab another six by seven because this one being the telephoto has the newer style grips on it even though it is six by seven um Takamar. but the earlier ones have the fluted metal uh, which i can show you that in the uh, right here um yeah this 300 f4 one of the longer lenses you'll see in someone's outfit um far from the longest the 800 and thousand millimeters that are available uh, but this is a pretty common one to see it's it's not terribly expensive um we'll have some of the specs for this one as well um and you can put this with a teleconverter let's see if i can show you that yeah with the 300 millimeter here we've got uh we can put on a teleconverter this being a two times um take this here 
Now, now we're starting to get a little ridiculous here in size. But, uh... Here we've got the Pentax 672 with a rear converter 2x67 and the 6x7 Takamar 300F4. So you can see it takes up a large space on my table here. Um, pretty heavy outfit. I mean, I'll have to get some weight for you and show it to you on the screen, but this thing this thing is, is a little unwieldy. But in this design, holding it like a standard SLR up to your face, much easier than, say, um, an RB67 or RZ67 or some of the other film cameras of this format with a lens like this. It's much more manageable than, than one of those. Um, let's get into that a little bit. I'll show you the comparison between the 6.7 system and some of the other cameras that you might be looking at in, in this film format um, and tell you why this one is a good one. So to compare this system, the Pentax 6.7, uh, specifically the 6.7 II, to some other cameras in this film format that you might be considering if you're out shopping. Um, you have obviously this one, an SLR design um, with a nice solid handle, easy to use, tons of accessories. Um, you might be considering the Mamiya 6 as a Mamiya 7 outfit. This is the Mamiya 7 II. Um, this is a rangefinder design, still handheld, nice ergonomic to hold and shoot. Um, it is rangefinder though, so you're not getting that perfect, you know, through the lens view. Um, one of the downsides to this one versus the Pentax is the availability of lenses. Obviously your finder is fixed. You're not going to be able to change out to a waist level or anything like that. Um, but in this one, you only have maybe five or six lenses that you can choose. The 43, 65, 80, um, 150, and 210 millimeters. Uh, so there's no macros, there's no shift, there's no telephoto out there above 210. Um, and then obviously no fisheye or anything like that. So this system is limited in that, although you can tell it is a little bit lighter and smaller weight. So that's a, that's a plus here, uh, but your availability of accessories and ability to do whatever you want in the future is, is greatly enhanced with this one. Um, so this still wins my heart in that way. Um, another system you might consider is the Mamiya RB or RZ outfit. Uh, this one here, a Mamiya RB67, seen with the 50 millimeter, which is roughly the same size as the others, the 90, the uh, 127, some of your standard lenses. Um, some of the differences here, it obviously is still a large outfit, um, seen with its uh, waist level finder, pretty standard, um, I believe. I know you can get the uh, eye level for the prisms for the RZ. Um, that might be a thing on the, the RB as well. Uh, one of the plus to the RB and RZ systems is your ability to change backs. Um, so if you want to shoot black and white or color or multiple ISOs or anything like that, you can do that um, on the RB. One of the downsides to the Mamiya RB or RZ um, is it is really designed to be shot from the waist. Even if you have a prism on there, there's no big handle on the side. You're going to hold it like a waist level camera, just up much closer to your face. Um, so I'm not a big fan of that. This is to me is more of a studio camera. Um, I mean, it's fine for outdoors, but, but the Pentax is definitely going to win in the ability to carry it around and shoot it comfortably. The thought put into the Pentax was, I feel like well, more, more well, well-rounded. Um, you can, you can change a lot on, on the go. Um, the RB, like I said, similar size, just not nearly as ergonomic to shoot, um, in my mind. Um, so that's a little bit of comparison with other some other cameras in that range. Um, yeah, so with when we got this camera, we were fortunate enough also to get the uh, the product guide for it when it came out. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that. It's kind of neat to to see all the what Pentex what that was cool. Um, so the different product information. So this is a little bit about your your LED readout in or sorry your uh, this is a little bit about your. Uh, viewfinder readout so you have your exposure compensation memory lock bar graph uh sure get all those things that you would normally see in a more modern uh dslr are all here in your in your viewfinder now so that's really cool um so here we see the the newer wood grip which is a sol uh, solid cylinder this is the older one um the newer one is a hot shoe versus the old cold shoe um, so that's an added plus you can see it here attached to the camera with a flash on top um, we also have the wide range of lenses um, available for it so most of these we'll have here in the store so there is the zoom lens um, we get that one every now and then 45 55 75 90 105 your your nice standards there um, the 165 200 300 all the way up into the four six 
and then your your thousand millimeter down here is a mirror lens uh, but still a thousand millimeters um, the fisheye really super cool um, lens availability so in this in this product guide um, all your your information you could ever want is there so here's some of the finders that are available the accessories I was talking about in the middle macro stuff you can even change out your focusing screens um, if you're really really particular on your metering um, you can get some spot meters spot meter 5 or digital spot meter I know we have four of these in stock right now so that's a one of the best spot meters on the market um, we have some of them zone 6 and then standard um, so that's a good one and then in the back we just have a little more layout of the body uh, where all your your ins and outs are um, so that's you know Pentex fortunate enough we got this with the with the outfit so that's kind of cool so that's a little bit about the Pentex 672 uh, 120 film camera uh, if you guys want to check it out um, or get your hands on it you can check us out online uh, or give us a call stop by our store so yeah, if you guys like this video um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up leave us a comment uh, i hope you consider subscribing share with your friends let us know um, down in those comments what kind of camera you'd like to see um, in the future um, we get tons of stuff in so i'd like to be able to share that with you guys um, we'll catch you next time